Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this month's Oakcrest Insight. We understand the topic on everyone's mind right now is the presidential election. And we know investors like yourself may be concerned about how their investments are gonna be impacted by this election's outcome. Or really, what changes should you be thinking about making with your investments if your preferred candidate loses? So today, I wanna to show you a few slides that you will not hear on the nightly news, but these are things that we see in our meetings and why our view is to not let your emotional reaction to the presidential election control your investment decisions. The reasoning? Well, stocks have a habit of performing well, whether there's a Republican or Democrat in the White House. This first chart I'm gonna show you has a lot going on, but what it's gonna show you is how stocks fare in the first year of a four-year presidential term. Now, when you start looking at this and what Bloomberg did with this chart is going back to 1993, show you at the top who is president, who controls the Senate, the House, and then the S&P return that first year. As you can see, the market the first year has traditionally done very well outside of a few outliers like 2001 when you had 9-11 happen. What our investment team here is more concerned about these underlines, keeping an eye on each of these individual sectors and how they're gonna be impacted depending on the presidential winner. Now, each candidate could help or hurt these different sectors based off policies they're able to get past the next four years. Secondly, I wanted to show you a follow-up chart to this, okay? So let's now go back to 1948 and look at the S&P 500 returns, again, during the first year after an election. As you can see from this chart, the average S&P 500 return is 9.4%. Investors have tended to enjoy strong returns during the first 12 months after each past election. One-year returns could be higher or lower than the average, as you can see here. As this takes into some of those lows from 1973 and 2001, and then those high years of 2009, 2021. I wanted to really show you these two charts and remind you as investors to not let your emotions from a presidential election change your portfolios in the short term. In this election, control of Congress may be just as important than who wins the president. A divided government would make legislation challenging to pass likely leading to more unilateral actions by the executive branch. But a red or even a blue sweep, on the other hand, may increase the opportunity for extensive policy changes that could happen in the next four years. So with that said, each candidate's perspective and plans on key issues will impact the broad economy and financial markets over the next four years. This will take a while to start shaping out. And that's why we're here to be your partner to get you through whoever is president and constantly keep you updated on key changes that could impact your finances, your investments, your taxes, and really your financial goals long-term. Long-term wealth creation, that power of financial markets, is far more dependent on factors other than who controls the White House. As we talk about this all the time, no one person, not even the president of the United States, has enough power to reshape the economy in a single handedly. I hope this was helpful for you as you think about your investments during this presidential election, and we look forward to seeing you next month on Oakcrest Insight.